And welcome back to The Factor on Censored. If you turned on the congressional hearings this weekend, former President Trump's attempted assassination, you would have heard the phrase, you should be fired, multiple times today. Now, those comments were aimed at the head of the U.S. Secret Service, Kimberly Cheadle. That's because of how the agency handled the assassination attempt of the former president. Cheadle admitted that the agents had been warned between two to five times that a suspicious person was near the Pennsylvania rally on July 13th. She says she's personally apologized to Trump after he was almost killed at a rally, but some lawmakers told her sorry will not make it. It won't cut. Joining us now here on The Factor on Censor to weigh in on this is former Secret Service agent Michael Matranga. Glad to have you here. Thank you. When you saw those hearings today, I'm sure you were not surprised what the lawmakers had as questions for the head of the U.S. Secret Service. I was not surprised at all, and, and quite frankly, I was happy to see that uh, both sides of the aisle were asking the appropriate questions to the director. Finally, we saw some bipartisan. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was actually very nice to see some bipartisanship. Now, take a, a look back at the assassination attempt. What kind of weaknesses did you see there back then? Well, um, I was headed to St. Louis when I got the call that there had been an attempt. Um, I immediately pulled over and uh, began to watch the, uh, the film and uh, recognized the sound of the gunshot because that was the same type of uh, weapon that I used when I was on the job. Uh, and, and I could as only assume based upon what I already know that it came from what we would consider an outer perimeter post. Mm -hmm. However, as the details have unfolded, uh, you know, at 130 to 150 yards, I, I would not consider that an outer perimeter post. And so um, the first thing that I asked, um, you know, my colleagues was, you know, why was that not, why was that not manned? And, um, you know, I was uh, not not surprised to see that and immediately the reaction was, well, that's an outer perimeter post, which is usually handled and, and manned by local authorities. But now that, uh, now that we know the distance. Um, I, I personally believe that that should have been manned and, and, and you know maintained by the United States Secret Service due to the proximity to the stage. And one of the things we saw on many of the videos on social media, and we have to take them at their value, many people trying to warn law enforcement that there's someone on that roof. Your thoughts about that? Yeah, today's testimony really opened up my eyes. If if people really stopped and listened to the questions that were asked and the answers that were given. One of the things that stood out to me um, was the fact that local authorities, a, a local counterpart, which was a SWAT element, identified him on the roof at least 18 minutes prior to the former president wow, taking stage. 18 minutes. And took a photo. And so, you know, we've always known since day one that there was a breakdown in communication, but 18 minutes is ample time to make sure that somebody, you know, on the shift within the local authorities uh, has relayed that information that we have one a suspicious person uh, because I think the, the conversation and the today, question was when did you realize right. or label him a suspicious person well and I think that that was good today that we got some clarity because there is a difference between a suspicious and a threat and so you know like the, the director said is that you know we have suspicious people every every site that are suspicious him having a rangefinder was suspicious but he became a threat when it's the same individual that was identified holding a rangefinder now now on top of a roof, that becomes a threat, and at least 18 minutes out is just completely unacceptable. And when you look at the most powerful country in the world, and we cannot prevent a shooter who had minimal skills like this, what do you think this will do for us on the world stage and other potential terrorists out there who, look, who are gunning for our leaders? That's one of my concerns, is that this is going to exacerbate, this is going to encourage other individuals to try things that they normally would not have done. Mm -hmm. And so um, I believe that the men and women of the Secret Service are still the best in the business. Um, I don't believe that this is any reflection of the individual agents that did their job that day. There's some that showed extreme heroism, and I commend them. This is a direct reflection of a decade and a half of poor leadership, an underfunded agency that has just been consistently 
piled on duty after duty after duty. You heard the director today say that we have 36 permanent protectees. The, cir the service was never designed mm -hmm. to maintain that level of protection. And I just think that we have unlimited resources. Well, I know that. I've seen it with my own eyes. All right. Michael Matrenga, yes, former U.S. Secret Service agent, thank you for thank joining you, us here on The Appreciate Factor.